Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I'm your disle- Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I'm your lustful elf, Hobbit Daniel Green, and today we're going to have one of the most hardcore episodes of Fantasy News we've had in a while. Meaning it's pretty much just like straight to the genre news we're covering here, and I'm excited to get into it, so let's, let's just jump on into it. And kicking it off today, we have quite the interesting update from Brando Sando Mando Lando Fando Cando himself, Brandon Sanderson. He gave us another little sneak peek into some of the changes he's making for the upcoming Mistborn movie screenplay. And if I may say so myself, these are intriguing. I'm not going to get into the details because I know some people are considering these spoilers. Of course, if you'd like to see them for yourself, link in the description right down there. But he's taking steps to streamline this movie and seems hyper aware of the fact that as an author, he needs to cut this down so it can make a coherent and easy to get through well-paced movie. And it's given me a lot of faith that this guy knows what he's talking about because he's shaping, shifting, and improving, it seems like in his own mind, the Mistborn story. He's grown quite a bit, obviously, as an author since Mistborn was released, so I'm very excited to see how this is going to go. Now, very vaguely, he seems to be looking to change a certain relationship dynamic within the Venger house and this will actually change how certain heisty type things are done within Mistborn. I know not all of you have read Mistborn, so I'm not going to get into more details there. He also seems to be upping the female representation with adding some of them to the guards and things along those lines, and I'm just excited all around. It's really interesting from my perspective as a fantasy fan to see an author himself come in and write the Mistborn screenplay. I haven't actually seen before that I'm aware of an author come in and write their own adaptation for a screenplay of a book they wrote. That's different and I like it. But kicking into a bit of a lighter piece here today, we have an update from Lee Bardugo who said there's going to be a special edition collection coming out of her book, Shadow and Bone. It looks like what's on the screen right now. That's very nice looking. I like it. And there's also a special edition coming of The Lives of Saints, another book by Lee Bardugo. Let me know when there's one of Ninth House. I really want a special edition of Ninth House. That was an amazing book and I still recommend it to people. And I get the appeal of Shadow and Bone. People, when I give like a negative review of an author's work, assume like, I hate that author. I hate everything by them. It's so weird. No, no, I'm, I'm fine with Lee Bardugo, and I think she's a great author because Ninth House was awesome, and I just didn't vibe with one other of her works. It's that simple. But in an update to the last time I kind of came at this website and yelled at them, I want to yell at Gizmo Blaze again because they're proving themselves to be one of the most despicable clickbait websites. Of course, I'm not going to put what they're clickbaiting about in the title of my thumbnail here, but I'm a bit angry at this because it's clear exploitation of fans' hype and hope for an additional book. And with some fans being very emotionally invested in these series, being he's like this. Well, it's not like horrible trauma. It's just very annoying. So Gizmo Blaze, the fact that you have the headline up right now, The Doors of Stone, the third book of the King Killer Chronicles release date is near. Patrick Rothfuss involves a new King Killer story. Yeah, it's not near. And in fact, your own coverage later on down in this article, you explicitly say that it's not known and it's not near done. So this is just a blatant lie you are knowingly aware of. And from the bottom of my heart, you for doing that. It makes it so people don't trust other news outlets like myself all the more. And yeah, I've made mistakes before, but I've owned up to them and I do better. Gizmo Blaze is just deliberately continually using headlines like these to get clicks. I won't be linking it down below because them, I'm not giving them clicks, and I'll continue to point out how awful they are to hopefully get more people to look at when something's from Gizmo Blaze and just immediately dismissing it without clicking that link because they don't deserve your views and this is disrespectful to all fan bases. Seriously, this is gross. And I also believe partially responsible for why authors are constantly getting harassed on Twitter like where's your book because they're fanning the flames for something that's just not there yet and it gives fans a false hope that they then output on the author. Hey, if I get like a cease and desist from you, I have a lawyer now too, so let's see how it goes. But in much happier news, we got a progress report from Joe Abercrombie about his writings right now. It was nice to look into, and I recommend you go check it out. It seems like Joe Abercrombie fans have had like a massive surge in my audience recently, so welcome. I'm glad to have you here, and this progress report was nice to look into. The biggest takeaway from this, though, for me, was the fact that A Trouble With Peace, his next first law book, is completely, totally, utterly, 100% done. 
which is awesome. And I like seeing that from the author. And he says it's like a strange moment. I believe you, it's, it's probably a weird moment to see like your big precious book be finished. So congratulations, Joe. I look forward to reading and reviewing it. Can I get an early copy, please? And another little addition here, now that A Trouble With Peace has had its cover release, been proofread and is ready to go, the next book, which is maybe titled, he specifically notes, The Wisdom of Crowds, is nearly done. So yay, first law book's coming out pretty quickly. Joe Abercrombie has one of those outputs as an author that I immensely respect, and with the consistent high quality, it's very, very impressive. And for those of you who are fans of virtual events of authors getting together and talking about their works, Rebecca Kwong and S.A. Chakraborty, sorry, that name's hard for dyslexics, are getting together to have a virtual con event and talk about finishing their trilogies, which, of course, you can sign up for in the links right down. I need to get weirder fantasy news, because I just, I don't know, I'm getting looser. This is just the real me coming out more. People say like, oh, Dale's put on more of a character. No, I just am comfortable and I'm, I'm gonna show you how weird my humor is. <laughs> and for sci-fi fans out there, we're getting a new release from Adrian Tovkovkoisky, Dyslexia, and it's going to be titled The Expert Systems Champion. I have not read anything by this author that I'm aware of, though often I forget, maybe I, oh no, I have. That's right, I read the spider one he did. That was good. So yes, this is another release from that author that you can look forward to coming down the road. Children of Time. That was what it was called, Children of Time. I remember being like lukewarm at it when I first reviewed it, and now that I like sat on it more and like reread little bits of it here and there, I like it more and more. Children of Time was good, good sci-fi book. Now, huge big fat disclaimer that this is a rumor that is meta layered within another rumor. So put a big old rumor disclaimer here, unlike what Gizmo Blaze would do when they would just make some shit up. But this is most definitely a rumor, and it's a rumor about a rumor. So apparently, there is a big budget Harry Potter game possibly in the works, though this is one of those things where it's like a lot of people have talked about it, it's been leaked in little bits in there, here and there again and again, so that's likely. But also there's a rumor about that rumor where with the recent backlash for J.K. Rowling's comments on Twitter, which I've already touched on, the company behind the game is getting nervous and they're afraid that what she's saying online could negatively affect the sales of the game they're working on. I don't know the legal implications around that, I don't know what they could do, but there's definitely a case to be made that J.K. Rowling, no matter where you fall on the side of what she's saying on Twitter, could hurt the sales of her game by what she's been saying for years, if we're being honest. She's been doing a lot of weird stuff for years. But let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. I don't necessarily want this to focus on J.K. Rowling's comments. There's been a lot of conversation around that and Stephen King's recent, like, backhanded bash to her, which was kind of funny. But what do you specifically think about the possible sales of this? And do you think that JK Rowling could actually really impact the overall sales of this game with the rather high percentage of her fans that are rather mad at her right now, to the point where even cast members of Harry Potter are coming out and disagreeing with her openly and publicly and condemning what she said? That's, there's a lot going on right now. Harry Potter fan base, I'm, I'm sorry with what you guys have to deal with often. It's, it's rough. Actually, in a last minute as I'm editing this update, it appears that the game has been confirmed and has a release date set for 2021, according to IGN. And another piece of misleading headline news, but it is loosely true. You've maybe seen headlines like, oh, Princess Bide is being remade. Not really, no, it's not. It's a fan film from celebrities who during quarantine and all this COVID-y stuff are getting together to make like a fan edit edition of the Princess Bride. This is not like a big theatrical thing and it's being released on Quibi, so no one's gonna see it regardless. So if a bunch of celebrities get together to make a fan film about Princess Bride and no one watches it, does it even really exist in the first place? Yeah, the watching Quibi's downfall has been very interesting. It's proof that no matter how much money you have, you can't buy a business smarts, especially in today's digital age. They have shot themselves in the foot so, so heavily. If you look into it, they are hemorrhaging money and well, this does seem like something that could go viral on YouTube, putting it behind any form of like new app, you have to down, uh, uh, it's gonna hurt it big time. I don't think it's gonna be successful and yeah, it's a cool idea. Wish it was just on YouTube, but it's Quibi. And now definitely transitioning out of the more hardcore fantasy news, we have more news around the potential Pirates of the Caribbean reboot that's in the works. I'm also seeing it referred to as Pirates of the Caribbean 6, but it seems more likely that this is actually just a reboot 
And that's that Robert Downey Jr. and Margot Robbie are reportedly involved. That's two real huge pieces of star power behind rebooting one of the largest film franchises of all time. And if you look at how film franchises go, it's certainly within the right time frame for Pirates of the Caribbean to be redone. A lot of franchises go through that initial cycle, raid dormant for a couple years, then get rebooted, especially within horror. Uh, the Jason movies, Michael Myers, God, all, all of them get rebooted like this. So I guess it's also happening to major ones now. I guess, could we ever see like a Fast and the Furious reboot? Would they start small again, where it's just like guys street racing in their like back streets, or would it just immediately jump up to like, jump a tank out of a plane and shoot another tank in the air? I don't know, and that, I don't know how I got into Fast and Furious here. It's where my brain's at today. But in the final piece of fantasy news we're covering here today, I'm gonna end it with a trailer announcement and a recommendation, and that's that if you are old enough, because you definitely need to be old enough to watch this, go ahead and check out The Boys on Amazon, because we got trailer for season two, it looks phenomenal. And this was probably one of my favorite TV shows I've seen in the last few years. The Boys on Amazon is stupendous, and this trailer looks damn fine. I'm ready for it. I want to watch more The Boys. It's a it's a wonderful TV show. Not wholesome. Not 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 wholesome at all. Not for the not for the faint of heart. But it's literally like not a week episode. Every single one was just more and more investment. And Carl Urban. You're not tall enough, but I want you to play Dresden somewhat. You'd be a good Dresden. All right, that's the note I'm going to end this episode of Fantasy News on. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Comment, watch for longer periods of time, because that's how you help YouTubers grow. People always ask, like, how do I help a YouTuber grow? Finish the video is, like, one of the big things. Um, you know, that's, that's for some reason... I don't know, a big metric YouTube's going off of, but hit the Patreon, like, subscribe, peace! And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, and that includes Malik, Shrek, I think I said that right, Ovidui, uh, Mulkreen, Modius T, Fingin McCarthy, and I need to do a retake for Abert. I forgot to look up how to say it again, but you sent me the correction. I will do that, and then I will do it again to do it again right. Or we'll just do it forever, it'll be a dance until we die. I'm not sure which yet, but it'll be fun either way. Hope you guys are having a great one, peace.